Hi guys. So a few years ago, I wrote software that sings. All right, that's a little better. It's a C language singing speech synthesis library. And if you have ever really dug down deep into the bowels of my YouTube channel, you may have heard it. <laughs> I should say that that's a recording of Ludmila Grigorian singing an Armenian song called Shushi, which I added two additional voices to, which are sung by my singing speech synthesizer. But aside from that, I never really did that much with this library. I never really properly released it or anything. I don't know, I guess I just got busy with other things. But re more recently, it seems like there's been interest in some of my other software. So I finally put this up on GitHub and put proper documentation on it and code examples and all of that. And so today, what I want to do is show you a little bit about how this works, at least enough that you could get started using it. And then at the end of this video, I'll give you a real proper demo with this software so you can really see what it's like to perform music with it. So at its heart, this software does wavetable synthesis, and so you need a wavetable, and I've provided some example ones here, and I tend to use this cello one, and what this is, is I took a recording of a cello playing a low F, I think, and I just snipped out one cycle of the waveform. So in other words, this is actually just a tiny blip of audio. It's like 11 milliseconds long or something. It's just kind of one vibration of the cello playing that note. And it doesn't really matter what the original pitch was because my software then is just going to play through this at different speeds to make different pitches. So that's kind of the heart of how the synthesis works. And of course, this doesn't sound anything like a human voice. It also doesn't really sound anything like a cello. Actually, it just kind of makes this weird electronic buzzy sound. Uh, so to shape this into the sound of the human voice, you need all of these allophone recordings. And I'm not 100% sure that allophone is the correct word here, but it's the word that I'm using. And so what this is, is basically, you need a short recording of every vowel or consonant that you want the software to be capable of singing. And again, I've provided this kind of demo set of allophones. So I'll play some of these so you can hear what it is. And so it doesn't really matter what pitch you sing these on because my software is basically going to remove the pitch information and just keep the timbre of each of these. And so if you want to think about it this way, these recordings basically tell the software about the inside of your head, like the shape of your nasal cavity and the position of your tongue, whereas the wavetable recording serves the function of your glottis, which is to say that it fills your head up with sound. And so I made this little demo program which should show how this works a little bit more. And so I can just quickly compile this and then I will run it. And so the first thing it does is just print out a list of all of the allophones that it read in and it tells you whether it considers each of those to be a vowel, a plosive or a fricative, and it handles those all just a little bit differently, but it figures out which is which automatically just by analyzing those recordings. And then if I press any key on my keyboard, this should sing the corresponding allophone. And this prints out which button I pressed at the bottom of the screen here, so hopefully you can see uh, better which buttons I'm pressing. <laughs> and 
and by default it'll just sing a little bit of each sound and then rest. But of course it can also sustain any of those sounds. And it can sing those on any pitch. And by default you'll hear that there's a little bit of vibrato that kind of comes in gradually on each note. And then, so the other thing you can do is you can program in an entire text. Like if you have a song, you can put in the whole text of the song and then kind of trigger through it. So every time you trigger it, it'll sing through the consonants and then hold the next vowel and wait to be re-triggered. And that's kind of how you actually sing. <laughs> Okay, so then I wanted to be able to control this with some sort of interface other than just my laptop keyboard. And just to show you how long ago it was since last time I was working on this, I'm using my Gen 1 iPod Touch, which my friend Peter gave me a long time ago. So, thanks Peter. And I'm using this app called Touch OSC, and this app still exists. It's a great app. And this app basically just gives you some generic user interface elements like sliders or whatever and I was able to connect this up to my software kind of over Wi-Fi like each time I touch a slider this sends a message to my laptop which my software receives and so I connected some of these sliders up But in practice, or in the natural human voice, you don't really control all of these things independently of one another. Like if you sing louder, your voice naturally gets brighter. And so what I did is I connected all of these up to the accelerometer so that just by tilting the device, I'm kind of controlling all of these parameters at once. The other thing that you might notice is that I turned off the built-in vibrato so that I can use a different axis of the accelerometer here to control the vibrato. And then I put a couple of huge buttons on the screen here so I can basically just kind of tap anywhere either of these buttons to trigger through to the next note. And so yeah, that's how this works. So now why don't we break out the piano accompaniment and actually try to play through a song and see what it's like.
Yeah, so that was fun. I guess if I had to critique this, I would say I sort of think that the sound is so bad that it's good in a way, like you wouldn't necessarily mistake it for a natural human singing voice. But I actually really love all the weird kind of glitchy roboticness about it. It, it sounds nice. And this is actually really satisfying to play music with. I feel like when you learn a piece of music on a regular instrument, there are kind of two phases. In the first phase, you learn the mechanics of the piece, which notes to play in which order, what finger you're going to use to depress which buttons. And the second phase is musicianship. How are you going to take that sequence of notes and shape it into a piece of music that has flow and continuity and expresses what you think it should express. And this system kind of cuts out that first phase and takes you directly to that second phase. But it really retains that second phase. Like playing with this system really feels like playing a piece of music on a more traditional instrument that you know so well that you're not worried about which finger is going to play which note. So in that sense, this is actually still really satisfying to play music with. It feels like singing. So anyway, yeah, the code is up on GitHub. I put a link to it down somewhere, and you're welcome to play around with it. Maybe I should say that the code is very efficient. I think it uses something like 8% of one CPU core on my laptop. I'm sure you could run that on Raspberry Pi or you know, just about any kind of embedded computer. Uh, so yeah, you're welcome to have a blast with it. As usual, I guess it would be nice if some of you guys would like this video, subscribe to my channel, share on social media, leave comments down below. All that stuff helps me out a lot. So yeah, please do that. You know, I recorded this whole video twice just because the audio sucked so bad in the first one. That's how much I care about you guys. So show your support by subscribing, please. Anyway, yeah, I guess that's it. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh